Yo, what's my one and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to go over how to edit a music video in Final Cut Pro 10. This video is not going to be like a complete step by step of how to edit a music video because that would take you know, like two hours to make a full um, tutorial on that. This video is more just giving you some tips and tricks and things that I've learned um, while editing a music video. Now this is my first music video. I've never actually edited um, a full on um, music video. This is my first go at it. So I want to give you some tips and tricks and things that I've learned from doing it for my first time. Now there, this is not you know in the intro for a reason because of copyright. If you want to watch the full music video, you have to go ahead and head over to my Instagram. I've uploaded it as an IGTV video because I don't want to run into copyright issues. And basically this, this footage is from an editing competition um, by Brian Delmana. So I can't post it in the beginning or else you know I run into copyright claims. So again, if you want to watch the full music video, I'll try to put a link down in the description below. Head over to my Instagram so where you can watch the full music video um, with audio and everything. So yeah, I can't put it in the beginning because I'll run into copyright issues. The first thing I want to go over is organization. So I'm going to go over some tips and tricks when it comes to organizing your music video. So if I head over here into the tutorial right here, open it right here as you can see um, right there you have the artist name and then you have um, the name of the song. So that's basically how I chose to organize it. Now inside the folder there are multiple different subfolders so you can see right here photos, music or the actual song, footage, and then 360 footage. And as you can see right here, here are a whole bunch of different um, subfolders right there. So as you can see right here, I basically just organized everything right here, a main folder, and then into different subfolders right here. You want to make sure your entire um, music video is organized because it's just going to help um, when it comes to editing. But another important thing is backing up your footage. So if I open up my let's see hard drive um, right here and you know wait for my hard drive to load, as you can see right there, music video right here. If I open it up right here, here it is. So basically there it is right there. It's in my hard drive. So it's always good to create a duplicate and put it in you know an SSD or an external hard drive or maybe even the file you know upload it to Google Drive. You want to have multiple duplicates of the actual project just in case um, something gets um, corrupted. So again a good rule of thumb and I'm speaking from experience because I made a video where I lost the entire video um, because yes I didn't back up the video. So I'm speaking from experience so if you're a newer editor hopefully you don't make that mistake. Remember always 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 um, back up your footage because uh, you 1000% are going to regret it. Now what you want to do right here is go over here to import section right here and as you can see right here I just basically took the folder and I just imported um, the entire folder and make sure keywords are from folders because that way it'll basically Final Cut will create its own keywords as you can see right here. So here are my keywords. So B-roll, music, perform, pictures, sound effects, and everything like that. Here are all of my different keywords. The one thing I did too is I took the music right here and then I just dragged it into my perform keyword right here. That way I could create a multi-cam clips and I'll talk about that um, in a second. The next one I'll go over is proxy media. So you can see right here, go to view right here, and I've changed it to proxy media. So I basically just created proxies or my entire, you know, my entire project into proxies basically. And what that basically does, simplest explanation, is just basically helps you edit faster. It displays a lower resolution on the preview window. That way you can edit um, a lot faster. So if you have a slower computer or you're working with your high file, high resolution files, highly, highly encourage you to use Proxy Media. I guarantee you it's going to speed up your workflow. There's no way I'd be, edit, be able to edit this as fast as I did um, without Proxy Media. Now one thing to keep in mind, you want to go back to Optimize Media for a couple of different reasons. One for color grading. Two for freeze frames and then three for exporting it has to be optimized media for exporting and then when you're doing like you know precise you know masking or color grading you want to put on optimized media because again the proximity creates down resolution so you want to make sure that you know you're looking at the, the highest quality um, when you're color grading and if you want to learn more about, uh, about proxy media go ahead and watch my tutorial I'll link it up in the annotated cards because it would take me a good you know 10 15 minutes to go over every aspect of proxy media but just know always use proxy media when you're doing your big projects especially music videos next one I'll go over is syncing clips so basically as you can see right here here is the song take the song right here um, select everything go over here right click new multi-cam clip right there and voila you can create a new multi-cam clip so yes I edit this entire vi uh, music video as a multi-cam clip 
So you can also go right here. I'll just close out this window and basically you want to click on command shift seven right here. And as you can see, voila, you have brought up all of your different um, angles right here. Now again, just like proximity, if you want to learn more about multicam, I'm going to go ahead and link um, an annotator card. So you can go ahead and check out that video. Because again, I will link a whole bunch of different tutorials to just talk more in depth about a certain you know aspect of of editing because it would take a very long time i'm trying to use this video to kind of you know, break down and give you bullet points and concise you know ideas of how to edit a music video so go ahead and check out that video if you want to learn more about multicam now a couple little different you know tips and tricks you know this is just you know a couple little ideas is if you have to you know manually line up the clips it's definitely a, a real pain to manually line up the clips all you're basically doing like i said in the other video um you want to just basically line up the audio waveforms as you can see right here i also muted all the tracks um that i don't want just in case you know if something happens, you know Final Cut messes something up. I don't want you know switching to different audio. I'm just wanting you know the main audio, so that you know one little tip you could do just to kind of look kind of like a, a safety feature. Now I want to go over timeline editing, and these are just a couple little tips and tricks that I've learned um, that I want to share with you. One thing is I'm um, basically lifting the clip. So you just take the clip right here, right click and click on lift from storyline that's why you see a gap clip I basically just lifted from storyline I also create a gap clip sometimes in the beginning to just organize my b-roll and photos basically at the end of the day if you're lifting from storyline or creating a gap clip this thing right here is also you know as like a gap clip basically what that does is that avoids the magnetic timeline I've, I've already made videos talking about the gap clip but basically simplest explanation is I'm just using it I'm just doing it so I can avoid the magnetic timeline so if you're a Premiere Pro user and you don't want to switch over to Final Cut because you're afraid of the magnetic timeline don't worry you actually don't have to use um, the magnetic timeline there actually is a way to get around it so I like using um, a gap clip again just to simply avoid um, the magnetic timeline now you're probably looking at my timeline right here and saying why in the world are there so many markers right here basically what that marker does is it basically shows where the beats are so basically just listen to this song and every time there's a significant beat so as you can see right here here's a marker I basically just pause or I just uh, hit the space bar pause and then I go frame by frame you know hear the beat all these markers are doing is just to help establish the beat so I basically I take the clip lift it from storyline and the next thing I do is just go ahead and mark out all the beats obviously I don't always edit to every single beat but I personally think editing the beat is I think my preferred style of editing there are a whole bunch of different cuts but I like cutting the beat is hands down um, my favorite cut so you basically just cut up the footage you know according to where the beat is and you know where the beat is because the uh, the marker it's just gonna save you a lot of time and it's just gonna make editing um, a lot faster now, another thing I want to go over is basically how to decide you know what to you know what clip or what camera to cut to. Now, simplest, I'll do my best to try to explain it. If you have any questions, go ahead and you leave it down below in the comments below. But basically, what I do is you know I already talked about this before in the multicam clip. You're basically just switching by pressing the one, two, three, four, five, you know, on your keyboard. But basically, what I do is I go ahead and head over here. The reason I you know, let's say I want to you know choose to that cut. I basically scrub over right here, and I know this section right here I want to make a cut. So how do I know which clip to cut? cut to well what I do is I hover over right here so this is what I'm gonna make the cut I look up at the cameras right here so I try to look at the cameras and look at what clip do I like the most okay I think you know camera um, five I think looks the best so basically doing you just you know when you're about to make a cut just scrub through the clip right here and look up at the um, top left and look at the camera and look for you know the artist doing a cool movement or you know the, the artist doing something you know basically simply put doing something cool that's the best way to describe it but you're basically just scrubbing through right here and you look in the camera and saying, okay, I want to switch to camera five. But look, camera eight, he's, he's doing a really cool move in camera eight. Maybe I want to switch to camera eight. So that's literally what I just did. I basically just scrub through and then look at the top left and just, you know, try to look at the cameras and just kind of see, okay, I, I like that or I don't like that. And I chose to go with camera five. But looking at, I think maybe like camera two looks pretty good. Camera eight looks pretty good. But that's basically how I do it right there to so just scrub through and look at the camera and find the one that I like. Another helpful tool, another thing is important. Um, is color coding so you can see where I just color code I didn't color code everything perfectly but it's always good to color code just you know identify this is like b-roll this is the multicam clip this is the sound effect color coding is a really helpful organization tool 
Next thing I'll go over is B-roll. So basically these are just things that aren't your performance shots. So this is you know different B-roll right here. I'll go ahead and just exit out um, right here. So I have a couple little tips and tricks when it comes to B-roll. Uh, so basically the first one is to record slow paced B slow paced um, B-roll for the intro and outro. If they least first in like 10 seconds, if the, if the artist is just you know like raging and going insane, it just wouldn't look that good. So record, you know, slow as you can see right here, he's just walking right here. I didn't record this, but he's just you know walking around the city. You want to record kind of you know like slow paced if I go to the end um, right here so as you can see right here he's basically just on a skateboard right here and there's just you know a slow shot slow kind of you know like a gimbal kind of gimbal shot handheld shot um, right there so you want to create kind of you want to shoot kind of these like slow paced um, things for the intro um, and outro now a couple of things too that I've learned too with b-roll is if the let's say the artist doesn't really feel like lip syncing in that particular moment and he just wants you know to dance or do some sort of gesture as you can see right here, this is an example right here. He's just, you know, flipping off the camera. That's just, you know, a very basic example. But basically what I'm trying to uh, get across is maybe there's times where the artist doesn't want to just lip sync and he just wants to dance or do some sort of performance. You can use um, that as B-roll right there. It's as simple as that. And maybe the, the, as you can see right here, there's a couple shots of him skateboarding. Maybe your uh, artist, your talent has like, you know, a really cool skill. Have him showcase that in the video. That's, you know, a couple of different um, examples of B-roll and a couple of things that I've learned, you know, if I shot my music video, those are a couple of things I would keep in mind. Now, one thing too is the intro right here. I use the intro to basically establish where the artist is. So you can see right here, he's in Chicago. So basically, what I did right here is I broke it into different things where I said like location, singer, or singers, and extras. Basically, what it just means is this is just setting up where, who, who, who like, what does the artist look like? Let's say you don't even, you've never seen this artist before. What does the artist look like? So basically, you're just using the intro to establish the location. Location, where are they? The scene, who's who's actually you know, singing on the actual track? Are there any extras or anything like that? You're basically using the intro to set up um, the entire music video instead of just you know, immediately cutting um, into the music video. Now that's obviously dependent on how the artist you know, actually recorded um, the song. As you can see right here, here is just B-roll right here. This is kind of you know, some slow paced one right here. This is kind of the outro having you kind of like looking him out in the distance right there. There is just, you know, uh, um, an example right there. And basically what I'm gonna do is you just basically want to just place B-roll over slower parts of the song. So let's say the beat is kind of you know, slower pace, kind of a chill part of the song. Add some B-roll just to spice it up. Let's say the artist is a couple of shots where the artist isn't really doing anything. He's just kind of just standing and looking at the camera. Add some really cool B-roll shots just to help make your music video look a little more um, interesting. Next thing I'll go over is color grading. So I'm gonna just go over a couple basic things and things that I use to um, to really help um, when color grading. Now again, if you want to watch more about color grading, I have a full tutorial. Go ahead. I'm um, gonna link up in the cards if you want to watch a more detailed um, breakdown of color grading. But just a couple of things to keep in mind. Always make sure you color correct before you start color grading or start adding a lot. You just want to make sure the exposure, the RGB parade, the midtones, the the entire image is just color corrected. Then start adding um, your LUT, your color grade. So as you can see right here, I also use an adjustment layer, custom LUT right here. So I use an adjustment layer to you know color correct all the uh, multiple clips um, at once and that's basically how I did it um, right there now here's basically a breakdown of how I color grade and again I'm not gonna go full in depth because I don't want to make this video you know like like 30 or 40 minutes long but I'll basically give you a quick rundown basically what I did was right here I clicked on the clip right here and then as you can see right here I'll go over right here go to window right here go to workspaces and then go to color and effects and again I've already made a video you know really breaking down um, how I color grade but basically what it was right here I took a section of the music video right here so let's use this shot example I added a color wheel I added a color curve I color corrected the video added a color grade and then added added a custom LUT. So this is all color graded. And then what I did basically was I took the color changes. And as you can see right here, I clicked on save effects preset to create my own custom LUT. Then I deleted all the color gra color grading effects on the off this clip. Then basically what I did was I, I as you can see right here, I, was, I opened up the clip right here and then I basically found the corresponding um, camera right there. And then I applied the LUT 
So if I click on this clip right here, as you can see, here it is, the color wheel and the custom LUT right here. So you can see I basically created presets and then put them inside, open up the multicam clip and put the, the color grading, the color preset in there. Now that's, you know, my personal preference. You know, it might you know be a little bit of work uh, for some people and you may have, you know, a better method, but that's basically how I did right here. So if I go over here, go to color, as you can see, cam one, cam two, cam three, cam four, cam five, right there. And there are all the presets um, for all of the different cameras and that's just my method your method may be completely different next i want to go over our visual effects so again i'm just going to give you a breakdown of how i did it so basically over here this is like freeze frames or any type of visual effect basically what you want to do especially when it comes to freeze frames is you want to go to the beginning and the end of each clip just to see if you can create a freeze frame so i went through every single one of these clips i went to the beginning and then i went to you know the end of the clip right here just to see if i could actually create a freeze frame so you can't you know randomly put a freeze frame on you want to check to see if the clip you know actually makes sense so basically you're just looking for shots where the artist is pretty still as you can see right here that would be that would kind of work but it'd be a little hard because the artist you know arms a little blurry so it would be hard um to cut it out but basically a couple methods i did right here as you can see here are a whole bunch of different examples basically right here i took the clip i created a copy of the clip right here and then i basically you know create a compound clip muted the compound clip and then i basically you went to the beginning you know create a freeze frame or i added you know a different um effect to it and also it is right here so you can see right here warped edges effect i also added an adjustment layer so basically what i did was i either add an adjustment layer to add an effect or i created a copy of this clip right here and then create a compound clip the only reason i decided to create a compound clip is in my personal opinion i think compound clips are a lot smoother and a lot easier on your computer so by creating compound clips i just feel like it sped up the workflow um but that's just but I did either use an adjustment layer or I created a copy and then created um, a compound clip just because I felt like um, that you know was a lot smoother you know a couple I'll, I'll also go over a couple little tips and tricks at the end but one thing always to keep in mind um, when you're doing edits is you want to use effects that complement your video so this song is a very um, kind of like fast-paced rage song so you can see right here I use this kind of frame rate effect right here if I play it right here as you can see the frame kind of stutters right there and basically I decided to use that effect because it was a fast um, kind of like rage song so basically I use this frame rate effect to slow it down because it's going so fast by slowing it down it actually almost looks normal speed because he's you know he's he's you know uh, like raging and going you know really really hard so being able to just you know have a frame rate effect to slow it down so always remember use effects that complement your video you can't just slap a random effect and you know make it work i'm not saying every effect in this video is perfectly you know complimentary but go ahead and you know, try different effects again go through my your final cut pro 10 tutorial playlist i have a whole bunch of different effects definitely go ahead and check out and see if any of those effects um you like but always again make sure the effect complements the video and doesn't you know, distract the video i'm not saying you know there's no effects that you know kind of distract but just just something to keep in mind and that's something you build uh, uh speaking from personal experience just from your practice you know just keep you just keep uh the repetition and eventually you'll get good at it and i you know i'm starting to get better at it but just make sure things complement each other the next one I'll go over is the title sequence right here now I just chose to do a very simple and minimal um, title sequence so you can see right here here's a title sequence right here if I go over here one thing that I added to is you know I did all caps cap size 100% and then I basically just added a drop shadow change the color so just a very basic I just chose to stuck with a very minimal and very basic um, text just for this video you can obviously you know do any text you want but obviously as you can see right here as you can see right here, it's like dry boy it has the name of the song right here and then it has the name of the director and then obviously the editor which is me so you know just add different text just to kind of you know show the name of the song who edited it who directed it it's always good you know to give people the proper um credit Next one I'll go over is sound design. So you can see right here, here are a whole bunch of different sound effects. Basically, this is just, you know, like city ambient sounds because the intro is just, you know, of Chicago. So I just, I think it's Chicago. And I basically right here, as you can see, I just added a whole bunch of city ambience um, sound effects right here. So, you know, I basically just turned on the volume, made sure all the sound effects faded. Um, and not, I'm not saying this is the perfect sound design. I just want to put together, you know, a basic idea um, for the sound design. All my sound effects are from Epidemic Sound. And one thing to keep in mind with sound effects and with music is you want to make sure your audio doesn't peak so you want to make sure your audio is between negative 6 and negative 12 so if I go ahead and just command um, out right here I go and bring up the audio meters right here as you can see right here 
uh, as you can see the audio meters stay between negative 6 and negative 12 so that's just something to keep in mind if anytime you're watching a video and the audio sound you know distorted or weird it's probably because the audio is peaking and it's probably because the audio is going above uh, negative 6 uh, decibels Next one I'll go over is the ending. Now, just like the beginning, I just stuck with a very, you know, basic and minimal um, editing. As you, I mean, uh, ending. This is basically just a fade um, to color um, transition right here. So basically, just a very, you know, basic shot of him. As you can see right here, it just fades to black right there. Again, this is you know a very basic minimal one. Again, you know, it's my first music video, so I just wanted to kind of test the very, you know, basics. As you can see right here, this is just a text overlay, and I got this from Pixel Films. Uh, studios you can go and there's a whole bunch you know really cool uh, text effects the next one I'll go over is frame rates now frame rates are really important so if I go over right here you all always 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 want to make sure everything is in the right frame rate it is one of the most important things you have got to make sure everything is in the correct frame rate so if I go to perform right here let's go as you can see right here 4k 23.98 frames per second if I go over right here to the project I created right here the project is 1080 23.98 frames per second you want to make sure the pro the uh, your project is the frame rate of the, the main part of the video or most likely the audio is going to be out of sync frame rate um, is really important I just wanted to cover a basic thing between the whole the whole thing between 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second it's all a personal opinion basically 24 frames per second gives you that more cinematic and that more film like look so if that's what you're going for if a video looks very kind of cinematic it's because it's in 24 frames per second whereas 30 frames per second is more for TV shows sports shows broadcast television and this is kind of a controversial thing I'm not sure everyone you know is kind of torn both ways in our sports videos I hear a lot of people say they want sports videos in 30 frames per second I like 24 frames per second because again it looks more cinematic and film like but basically 90 but 95% of the time you're basically gonna stick between or choose between 24 and 30 24 the big difference is basically 24 is more cinematic and 30 frames per second is a little more fluid but always make sure the frame of the performance shot matches up with the frame of the project or else you're probably gonna have something um, out of sync Lastly, I want to go over some tips and tricks and some a couple of things I've learned. So the one, most important thing is the song, especially if you know you're, you're making a music video. Always remember, or sports video, whatever. You want to make sure these songs, you know, very catchy. I found you know, music is one of the you know, most important things. So if you're making a song, make sure you know the song is you know really kind of catchy beat because that's really gonna catch um, people's attention. And remember, the music dictates the video. The as you can see here, it's all edited the beat. So don't you know randomly put clips together the music completely dictates the, the the pacing of the entire video so you're basically you're 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 a slave to the music basically so you have to make sure your video is in line um, with the music so music in my opinion is the most important thing because it dictates the entire pace and flow um, of the entire video I think I want to go over is visual effects I would say maybe choose you know very similar visual effects don't have like every single visual effect be different pick some visual effects that are often you know kind of similar kind of sprinkle them throughout the video just so it has some kind of consistency and a couple things I found you know, look really nice is sometimes you'll put similar fix effects together most importantly don't force effects and don't just put a compilation of random um, effects those are just a couple little tips and tricks but the big one is basically don't force effects and don't just put a compilation together this isn't a compilation video this is an uh, entire music video obviously I'm not saying every single effect you know is perfect but those are just a couple tips and tricks and things that I've learned um, you know as I, I've kept on doing this you know and trying um, to improve but those are a whole bunch of different things another thing too is you want your video to kind of tell a story or have a structure so you don't have like a story with like a beginning middle and end or you know some sort of conflict have some sort of conflict in your video don't just use a bunch of random clips as you can see this is organized I had an intro and then I had the music video and then I had an outro it can be even just as simple as that but have tell some sort of story and it's not just a compilation of random clips and I can't sometimes it's like a sports video show the conflict you want to tell some sort of story in other words have some sort of structure to video don't just have a random compilation of clips added to music and that's not really a video you want to tell some sort of story or have some sort of structure uh, another really um, important thing is consistency so especially when you do a music video you want to film in similar locations and don't just put random clips together so if you know I've 
one clip of it was him in like Paris, another was in London, another was in Australia. Like it's just it's so jarring and so confusing um, to the audience. And that's the same thing with like sports videos. Don't just do a compilation of a different you know athletes. Make a video about Patrick Mahomes, like a Patrick Mahomes mixta uh, mixtape. It's important with consistency because it's just in my opinion um, going to look a lot better. And one tip that I've learned just by doing this, if I you know went ahead and shot a music video, I would bring a laptop with me to check and see if the audio is synced. Like I said before, there is ways to manually sync up the audio, but I would bring a laptop just to make sure that the audio is synced, and if the audio isn't synced, go ahead and reshoot it because there's no way you want to manually line up clips. I've never done that before, and I have no intention of trying to do that. That seems way too um, hard. And those are a whole bunch of tips and tricks that I've learned. I'm not saying everything are right or wrong, but in my opinion, those are things you know I've learned um, by editing my first music video. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you're new to this channel, I upload Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you enjoy these types of videos, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial playlist with over 260 Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.